according to the quick count results, exceeded the uh, opinion polls, which had him just nudging the sort of 50% mark, but the current quick counts have him at about 58% of the vote. Now, it's crucial for him to get above 50% of the national vote. Uh, that plus a good showing in at least half of the provinces across the country uh, would be enough to secure this in one round. He wouldn't have to go to a runoff. The 58%, which he's currently on, according to these unofficial but traditionally fairly accurate tallies, suggests that there won't be a runoff, that in one day today, Prabowo Subianto has sealed the presidency. Quite remarkable. What was the turnout like in the end, Bill? Uh, turnout across the country, uh, relatively high. They, they always are somewhere in the sort of 70-80% with Indonesian elections. The whole nation gets into it. It's a public holiday over here. Uh, voting in Jakarta and in Java was uh, disrupted this morning because of storms and even flooding. But uh, even though there was a slow start, particularly in the capital, we didn't see long lines or anything early in the day. Uh, later on, a lot of people went to the polls and there are so many polling booths, about 800,000 across the country. Uh, that means they are actually able to get up to 200 million voters to the polls within about a six hour period in each city uh, or each village. And uh, for that reason, it's been a fairly calm, uh, smooth election. It is remarkable when you think of those logistics. And of course, it's not just presidential elections. No, there are parliamentary uh, elections going on as well. Uh, when it comes to the integrity of elections, uh, experts and observers here often say that, um, yes, there's a fair bit of money politics in the presidential race, you know, uh, sort of illicit donations and things like that. Uh, but it's perhaps even uh, more egregious in the parliamentary elections. Um, tens of thousands of candidates uh, running for various posts across the country. But it is, from an international perspective, uh, the big one, who will lead this country next? Uh, that's what's been uh, occupying people's mind and attention for the past few months. And in the end, it appears that Prabowo Subianto has just blown everybody away. Yeah. He's had quite the makeover, really, when you think, up, think about it in this election, um, the way his campaign presented him. What do you think we can expect from him as a president, though? Well, Bev, he's promising to be the continuity candidate. He's not promising to shake things up. He basically has said to Indonesians, if you like the way the country's been running over the past 10 years under Joko Widodo, vote for me because I will keep those programs going. I will keep seeking foreign investment, particularly from China, to build infrastructure, uh, to develop the country's nickel export industry, to build electric car batteries. Uh, he will uh, continue to... Um, uh, put money into defence because he is the defence minister. He says a strong military is important for Indonesia. But he also has reaffirmed the country's commitment to being non-aligned, not to take sides with China or the US. And as far as Australia is concerned, Prabowo Subianto has never really raised strong concerns about the AUKUS nuclear-powered submarine plan. So from an Australian perspective, uh, he's been uh, fairly good on that front. He also, too, has been active negotiating an upgraded defence cooperation pact uh, with Australia's Deputy Prime Minister, Richard Miles. So even though he was banned from entering Australia, Bev, for many years due to past human rights abuse allegations, he might actually be someone who Australian leaders find is a fairly easy counterpart to work with. Yeah. Great to talk, Bill. It seems like quite the festive atmosphere there. Good uh, to have you on. Thanks. Thanks, Beth. Cheers.